Okay. And then just sequel after sequel after sequel. There was no character development at all. Just that on pure technical levels. There are filmmakers that don't want it just to be an entertainment experience. Hello and welcome to Me and Academy and Law and Film Dive Podcast, episode 49. We're nearly at our big 5-0. The big milestone, 50 years old. Watch out for that space. We're going <laughs> to... Some new revamps, new announcements, new lots of things. New revamps, refresh, and updates. Well, we've been working behind the scenes on some things there, so... During this pandemic environment, it's been tough mm-hmm. trying to grow the channel and yeah, work how we used to work so it's all a matter of trying to work around the issues and the setbacks and the as you all know all melbourne's issues. had a lot of setbacks melbourne's been in a we've not, been in the not red a good place not not a good place at the, str- the rest of the country hates us yeah let alone the stuffed, world yeah stuffed but anyway we're not here to talk about the pandemic we've heard enough about that yeah um we're going to talk about tron tron legacy yeah, Tron and Tron Legacy. Um, so there's two, yeah. It's yeah. Inter- interesting. Tron, I guess if we begin at the start, just to quickly mention what the original Tron. So mm. Tron was bought out of a time, a very definitive time for Hollywood, where they really started experimenting with what was possible with modern day technology, digital technology. Yep. And this was one of the first full length films that used a lot of, 3D animation mm. what we're all used to seeing these days and it was very basic it was just grids yeah and these little crafts and all these little funny different elements mm. sort of all got put used this was a test case and it looks very basic for today's standards but yep. this was completely new at the time it hadn't been done this is something completely revolutionary for the time even though it didn't necessarily look any better necessarily than what had been done in the past, but mm. this was done in a completely different way. Yeah, there was like a big fraction or like a 25% kind of thing of CGI at that time. The rest was matte paintings mm-hmm. and um, a few other uh, tricks and effects styles of the of the past. Uh, so there was a big, it was a big kind of um, hodgepodge of different styles, I suppose just to try and get anything to work and make it new. Yeah. Something new. And during Disney's kind of down, this is their dark period where they were trying to find their f- footing again in the industry. They weren't making money off their Disney animation anymore. So they were trying to figure out what they can do And their feature films are kind of not really taking off that well either. Cause like that black hole and, you know, the Black Cauldron, the, the animated one. Lots so of the, blacks going on. Lots of blacks. Dark they, period. As they say, it's the black period. And, the Tron, period. and Tron was very dark as well. So it's, yeah, it's, <laughs> it's all, a theme. It's all, it's, it was the theme of the time. And uh, they were kind of ahead of the dark night in the, yeah. the dark world. And Star Trek entered darkness. You know, they had their dark phase. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, it's just interesting. Um, and thank God that they, they, they kind of went through that phase because I think, you know, they took a lot of risks and mm-hmm. Tron was one of those risks. Yeah. And it's kind of, it reminds me of, um, kind of how Apple, the company kind of began. It's kind of like in tandem with Pixar and Apple and mm-hmm. all yeah. these techie guys, are you know, bubbling up and, you know, all happening and, yeah. you know, and John Lasseter actually saw Tron being made, the, the original film, when he was working on, um, I think, a Mickey Mouse cartoon at the time. And he sort of saw what they were doing and thought, hey, there's the future right there, mm-hmm. the CGI stuff. Wow. And obviously, he went uh, went off and did Pixar. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it was just um, Tron is one of those, once again, it's one of those films that kind of allowed more things in the industry to happen. It was kind of that film that needed to happen for other things yeah. to fall into place. Yeah, because you, a, a lot of people, when I was growing up, when I I, I watched this when I was in, in, in the nineties, so mm. it was at that stage it had already dated a little bit. Yeah. Um, yeah, and so a lot of people would put that in. Oh, don't watch that film. It's, but it really. But then there's also those other people that have a really soft spot for it, mm. and I've kind of got it in. I've got a soft spot for it in that it took risks and it gave it a, a shot and it tried something different. And you, you need you need these new things to try something new, these new films to try something mm. new 
so that we can get what we get today. You always need that guinea pig to, to mm. really give it a crack, try mm. it. Most of the time it doesn't work. Yeah. But in this case, you know, it it paved the way. It it even if it was just to inspire Lasseter. Yeah. Because as we know, he's, you know, one of the big driving forces in the whole industry and he started Pixar and then mm. grew from there. And that's the thing, like, you know, this is what happens with art or films or whatever you want to call it. Like you get that ins- inspiring thing that, you know, whoever were kids at the time or people that wanted to get into animation or maybe they got into animation due to this film or effects or the film industry in general um, or whatever it is, you know, an artist or whatnot. You know, you see something and you go, oh, that really sparked my imagination. Mm-hmm. That really, that was a really creative piece of work. I mean, the f- film itself might not be you know, the greatest thing ever, but the things in that film, you know, is what makes you excited and inspires you. And that's what sort of drives a lot of people to to get involved. And this is one of those films that I think is a landmark film for those reasons where, mm. where it did sort of cement the future. Whereas like, you know, funnily enough, you know, it's it's kind of like that that film that, when you look at it now, you go, yeah, it's very dated, but at, at the time, it would have been yeah. very interesting to see at the time. When I was in grade six, I still remember it clear as day. So there was mm. a there was a program I'd got in grade six called Poser, and it was a 3D software, okay. and it was very yeah, basic, right. and you just get these, you know, these characters, and you can just, animate them and do stupid stuff. Mm. But I always had this idea, and I was so passionate about making this film in grade six mm. and I was going to be called the third dimension and it was a big I guess an homage to Tron where it was very everything lives in a grid and I had all these ideas of having all these creatures interact in this third dimension world mm. that it was a third dimension that where people in the real life would fall into this dimension and it was this big idea that yeah, I had. Yeah. I never actually finished it, never. Yeah. Really, but but it was just an idea that I had using that program called Poser. There you go. To try and do that. So, so you, there you go. So you're one of those people that were inspired by yeah. it, and then you know you, you've got into the film industry and all that sort of stuff too. So it's kind of one of those things. It's just the amount of people I bet that this film has done that to would be a lot. You know, yeah. it'd be one of those films, and that's one thing it can be applauded for. You know. Yeah. But getting on to the film itself, you know, Jeff Bridges, um, wonderful actor. I mean, he's kind of one of the actor's actors that everyone kind of just likes him because he's cool and he's also, mm-hmm. you know, the Lebowski, you know, so everyone, you know, this is one of his trademark roles, you know, it's Tron, you know, the big Lebowski and I don't know, True Grit. I don't know, I'm trying to think of other films he's done that he's really remembered for as that character and... I'd say Tron is one of the early ones he did that is remembered and in Starman as well. But um, it's funny though because he doesn't actually play as Tron. When you when you see the movie Tron, of you know you think about it, Tron's not the main character, mm. which I always found funny because it's such a cool name. You'd think it would be the Jeff Bridges character or someone of importance, but yeah. I guess he is a kind of important, but not especially in the second one, Legacies doesn't really do much at all mm-hmm. so i always found that a bit funny it's tron legacy and it's like yeah how come it's not <laughs> about tron then you know what i mean like it's mm. anyway it's one of those that's one of the things i probably have against the film in, in way or the films in ways that it's kind of like doesn't really make sense in that way you think you yeah. it after the main like a main character but it's yeah not it, really it can't it seems like the the new thing where they like to to, to have these names that are kind of meant to sort of Ark and back, you know. Like we've got the new Space Jam coming out, which is yeah. whatever that was, a new something. Oh, yeah. <laughs> a new jam. Yeah, it was something. Space Jam. Remember. Yeah. Um, but they're all meant to sort of evoke like this connection to the original. And yeah. It's all this. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I didn't, really, I didn't really have history with the original Tron. I mm-hmm. didn't see it until much yeah. later on. I think in the probably mid 2000s I saw right, it just yeah. before the new one came out you know not I didn't watch it in preparation for the new one I just kind of finally got across it in my stoner days and yeah and I think I was just like I can really really I really like a lot of things about it but overall I was just like yeah okay yeah I kind of never get through the whole film <laughs> that was that was that was a lot of people have had that 
a view on it. There's mm. been a lot of people, and it's um, in terms of a story itself, it's a bit janky. It's a bit yeah, all over the place. Yeah. Um, where it seems like its biggest approach, its biggest, it was really just trying to be a whole wow film, mm. more than just about look what we can An do. Experience, yeah. Um, and in that, in in that uh, sort of uh, aspect, it did that. Yeah. To me, it, yeah. it, it, it's it got that dreamlike experience where it takes you into a new sort environment. Of environment and it's got that dreamy feel. Like Avatar is very mm. similar. That's another film that has that kind of... Utilizes that same yeah. idea. It's like yeah. you're... You've a world taken, within a world. You, you've taken something and you're hallucinating almost. Yeah, it's got yeah. that feeling to it. Yeah. Um, where I always get that with the, the Tron films and, uh, and the Avatar films also have that sort of dreamlike experience to Ready it. Player One should have had it, but it <laughs> yeah, unfortunately <laughs> that one didn't have it. But um, um, that's yeah. But I, when when I saw it, like it, even then it felt dated. The, the original, mm. um, so it was interesting to to see how they would tackle this. And when I saw they started advertising this new Tron, I was kind of like, well, how are they going to tackle this? Because mm. the original was hanging off the fact that it was this new thing, this mm. new way of storytelling, this new visual medium. Yeah. Where the Neutron, I was like, well, we're used to all of this new technology mm. now. So that really they can't hang on the technology as much as they could in the first time. Yeah. So going into it, I was like, hmm, it's going to be interesting. What are they pushing here? Yeah, like what, what's, what, what are they really going for? Mm. I was thinking, I was kind of the same thing. I was like, yeah, what's, what's going to be so special about this? And I guess it was just the art style, really. Yeah. Um, and the music. Obviously, the music's what really came out of it as the probably the most successful aspect of this film. It was the music by Daft Punk. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was such a massive soundtrack. And when I saw it at the cinema, um, I think it was opening night. So I didn't know much about it going in. Saw it. And it was, it was literally the music that made the film for me, along with the visuals, you know. Those two in tandem were just spot on, especially in the cinema. Mm -hmm. Story, not so much. The acting's okay. Everything's passable to a, to a point. But I find the music's the standout thing. Yeah. That's what really made it pop with the, with the art style. Yeah. Well, that's the... Tron has never been known for great storytelling in terms of a story sense. It's mm. never been its big focus, I yeah. think. Yeah. And yeah, it's never I, made sense no. to me, to be honest. Like these programs running around, <sighs> like, you know, like I've never been able to make heads or tails no, of it's it. All, it's all a bit nonsense, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> but visually, like, okay. yeah, right. The, this idea, this visual style mm. has really found its way into pop culture in a big time. indirect way. It's yeah. very like... This idea where it's just this, you know, you've got effectively black and these bright colours that are popping mm. out of, of the design. There's something that we've seen a lot of now. We see it all over the place, especially in like the early 2000s when mm. graphic styles, if we look at the graphic scene, the graphic design scene, we started seeing a lot of this kind of stuff with in, in invention of the internet and all that kind mm. of stuff. We saw a lot of that dark colours, bright, you know, juxtaposed with these yeah. bright, shining colors neon kind of fluoro light so yeah is is um so that's probably its biggest legacy if i will <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. um is is that is the visual style how much it kind of um is kind of the daddy of the idea of internet and mm. just, you know programs and coding and yeah yeah you know trying to turn that into a <clears throat> an, an art style or something that's um you know graphical yeah that's right how do you reflect on how do you make it interesting ones and zeros and that I, if you look at if you look at how computers began if we, we go right back to the beginning it mm. was green bright green text on black and that's yeah. all it was you know yeah. yeah and this is before we had graphical interfaces it was all effectively text form mm. and that's really i guess the real beginning of that style mm. and tron was able to write off that style of just black and then bright fluoro colors in your face mm, and really true. use that um as they and DNA, and yeah. it's interesting because i think half the reason my tron the original tron wasn't a lot of people didn't get it is because computers were, wasn't a big thing back then you no, know? no it was a lot of people didn't understand 
didn't understand it, didn't know it. This is mm. before the internet. This was before all this stuff. Mm. And it was all kind of like a completely new alien concept to a lot of people. Yeah. Um, so, and now we can understand technology, but we've got the opposite issue where we've got so much Too beautiful, much. there's beautiful designs, everything is stunning, right? Mm. <laughs> where we all, we're, we all understand technology so well, mm. but we don't understand it in the old fashioned way that like they used to know it. Yeah. So it's, yeah. It's, Interesting. It's, it's a funny kind of um, contrast from mm. now to then, you know, yeah. it's how much, so much has changed. Yeah. Um, but also I think with Tron Legacy, I think the problem, the issue I had with the film is probably mainly CGI Jeff Bridges at the start and mm -hmm. throughout the film. Like it's okay at yeah. parts, but it was at a time where they were really, I guess, I think this was one of the first films that kind of did the de-aging thing. Yeah. And... It's still it's still not right today. Like it still needs a lot of work, and mm. I, I personally don't like it. Like, w what about the new uh, uh, Netflix film that came out? Came oh, out. the Rob De Niro one, The mm. Irishman. Yeah, yeah, I still had issues with that. Yeah, I mean, I like. I, I still haven't been able to watch it just because that that runtime scared me off. It's huge. It. <laughs> um, look, it's I didn't mind it in that film so much, but I, I could see it. I could see it straight away and it made it very hard for my mind to to, to see Robert De Niro at different ages, even though <clears throat> I'd say that one pulled it off the most for me out of all of them yeah. that, that have used it to an extent. Maybe some of the Marvel stuff's been okay, like Robert Downey Jr. being yeah. de-aged and that's been okay. I guess, I guess since Benjamin Button, that was kind of like the beginning of yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. And really that's Fincher and he, yeah. and he really knows how to kind of disguise a lot of that as much as possible. Mm. But I've never really, I've never been able to kind of sit there and just watch it. I'm always, my brain's always going, you know, f yeah. red light going, yeah. unnatural. If I, if I think about the film Tron Legacy, the, the, this new one, mm. having watched it, I never look at it as, wow, the visual effects blew me away. Mm. It was, it looks good. Mm. It looks what, but it looks like what we expect to see. Mm. It It didn't really do much well more than factor. that yeah it yeah. wasn't like you know look at a film like avatar which has been a big inspiration when i was at that pivotal time in my in my education when i was studying mm. i'd finished high school and i was moving mm. and i was studying we we're both studying yeah um and that was sort of like a pivotal time where that really blew me that blew my socks off just in a storytelling sense using that kind of that, that visual medium to mm. tell to create this larger world mm. and this neutron had a kind of dreamlike experience to it but it still just didn't have it, it was running on just the the visual style the art style which is nice mm. but in terms of the visual effects it didn't have that same wow factor for me yeah well it definitely like through the film i know what you mean like i I love it. Like, I love the look of it. I love the colors I've used. It's a bit muted because mm -hmm. the original, I think, is a lot more colorful in a lot a, a lot more ways. And this one only uses the, those few colors. Yeah. Like, you probably see behind me in the art style. Yeah. It's strictly that palette. And there's not much more to it than that. But I, I really enjoyed that. But I got to a point in the film, I was like, okay, I've kind of had enough of this now. I'm yeah. getting a bit bored. That third act for me definitely falls apart. Like, I'm so out of the film by that point yeah. you know it was basically the music that really got me into it and yeah like i look forward to seeing if they tackle tron 3 as you know they mentioned they're gonna hopefully do a tron 3 for disney plus so mm. hopefully they do yeah then yeah. the, my only concern with that is that if it's straight to disney plus that it's going to be budget. a smaller budget it's going to be well, less uh, I, I don't want this to Spectacle. come out the wrong way, but but the the talent won't be as significant. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like I I thought about that too, but I thought maybe they could do a smaller scale stuff, explore those worlds a bit more, mm -hmm. um, get I, away from being locked into what they had done previously. Yeah. Maybe they could expand and go elsewhere with uh, it. I think that's the biggest thing. Like take on the world, take on the concept. But you don't always have to tell the same story of the same characters. Yeah, yeah. You can really away from re that. reinvent what the world of Tron is. Yeah, because, I mean, it's just basically in computers. Like, mm. it's you don't have to be like, okay, this is what it has to look like. And we've seen, we have seen this concept done a few times now. We've got mm. a few films that have 
um, come out, like Wreck-It Ralph is one of them. Mm. It's obviously a completely different audience, completely different take. Yeah, yeah, but it's but that idea of a world within a, within the computer system. So we've yeah. seen it done a few times. Yeah, it's not completely strange anymore. Yeah. There's so much there Things, to explore, yeah. and I think they've only just like explored a small portion yeah. of what computer worlds could look like inside of a computer it'll, i reckon it'll be it'll be cool if they had a simpler simpler style but maybe a, tried it like maybe a tv series mm. approach at it where they could they don't have to be so flashy in terms of all the visual effects mm. and just hang on maybe the art style a bit more and just create a really cool visual look for the art style yeah. it doesn't have to be photorealism amazing well, look at look at all this amazing mm, realistic thing. Yeah, I agree with but that. it'll be cool just to, i reckon that, that just try and explore different storyteller mediums yeah know? yeah i think i think you could almost do like a black mirror thing like mm -hmm. where you're kind of exploring different angles yeah you could even have episodes on outside of the tron world like they do a little bit through the films where you're kind of looking at the the, the, the developers and stuff like that and a bit of stuff going on in the outside world as well as the inside yeah, world maybe how, it could be how set inter 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 and it could be set in the future like yeah. way down the track even and you kind of got these different kind of mm -hmm. you know environments and landscapes and maybe it could be a you know a program and then a program and then a program and then you know and it's just like this never-ending kind yeah. of digital you know vortex it'll, it, i reckon it'll be it'll be fun to play with how a programmer someone who writes a program how that influences the Tron world and, mm. and and how it changes the world and playing with that idea and it also means if they do as you're saying they have these they have a TV series all these different mm. stories I've always liked those in that it gives up and coming filmmakers directors different a chance angles because well. you know yeah. you get a different director for each episode yeah. they did the same thing with Mandalorian they had all of these mm. different talented directors some of them hadn't directed much in the past but this is mm. a perfect some had done a lot but mm. but this is a perfect avenue for them to try something new where they've got a bigger budget yep. but but less risk you know mm. so yeah do the mandalorian really cool. thing absolutely mm. do the mandalorian thing i reckon i reckon they should do that with most of their ips and even that <laughs> might be even if we go to the way the mandalorian were filmed that might be a, where, where they had effectively a big studio that was a one big led space mm. and all the visual effects were done within the led screen was done in camera so there's yep. no post maybe tron that might be a really interesting way of tackling tackling it. that where yeah. they can have these worlds and give it to a new director here's our here's our world mm. do what you want with it and film it in camera edit it you're done beautiful sounds good well you know we could talk about tron a lot more but maybe we will come back to it at a future mm -hmm. thing i guess final thoughts before we finish up anything else you want to add to it um no just the music's probably the most memorable thing for yeah. me and obviously a bit of the art style yeah I, I think i've got more of a love towards the first one just because it was more groundbreaking yeah it was more for me personally it had that it was at that period where it did inspire yeah. my filmmaking yeah uh even though there was a lot wrong with it there was still a lot that was enough inspiring in terms of the the way it was made and the visual style and the idea of making something on a computer mm. with computer software and yep. what that opens the door to is probably the biggest takeaway. So finishing up just, yeah, my fi final thoughts is just being able to open a world that hadn't been opened to me before at that time in mm. my life. So, yeah. Yeah, I mean, apart from... This is it. Last thing I'm going to say. <laughs> Apart from those few moments in, in the new one where they kind of, where he does like when he's on the bike, and they have that, you know, he has to do those challenges. And then, mm -hmm. you know, with the discs as well, he's that little disc fight um, and also on the bikes and stuff. Just those few kind of little yeah. things he's got to do. I think that's the peak of the film for me, really. That's, that's when it was its most exciting. And then everything else around that kind of, I could sort of take it or leave it. But yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's still cool. Cool concepts. Worth a watch. Yeah. Very good. Anyway, well, thanks for watching, everyone. Make sure you like, subscribe. Yes. Ring that bell. And, and we'll see you for our big 5-0 next time. Hey. <laughs> see you then. Adios. See you later. Bye.